Hey everyone, welcome to the session by IntelliPath. I am sure most of us out here are Android users, right? But have you ever wondered about the official programming language of Android? Well, I am talking about Kotlin, guys. Many companies like Google, Pinterest, Uber and other technology-driven companies go about using Kotlin for their daily needs. And in this session, we'll check out a quick introduction to Kotlin and go about seeing what it offers to us as developers, guys. And guys, make sure to subscribe to our IntelliPath YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on an upcoming video. And here is the agenda for today. We'll quickly start out by finding out what Kotlin is. And second, we can check out the history of Kotlin. Third, we'll check out all the features that Kotlin brings to the table. And next, we'll go about checking all of the IDEs that are used to write Kotlin code in, guys. And next, I'll help you guys set up Kotlin on a Windows environment and get you started up on your first piece of code. And guys, if you have any comments, head to the comment section and let us know. We'll answer it at our earliest. And guys, to get certified in trending technologies, make sure to head to the IntelliPath's website and check out all the certification courses. Without further ado, let's begin the session. Introduction to Kotlin. Well guys, what is Kotlin? Well, to give you a quick definition of Kotlin, Kotlin is an open source, general purpose, statically typed programming language for using uh, with the Java virtual machine and Android. So this basically helps combine object oriented models and functional programming models as well, guys. This is the biggest advantage that Kotlin gives us as a programming language. The first uh, key takeaway from the slide is that it's open source. The second key takeaway is that it's, it's a general purpose language, which allows both object oriented and functional programming features and it gives it to the users as well and the third point is that it is statically typed well statically typed pretty much means that you wouldn't have to give the data types or match your variables with respect to the data types every time you go about using it guys so if you have a variable you do not have to specify every single time that it's an integer or a float or a double basically it's it's as simple as that guys so uh, coming to the next point is pretty much you might be wondering where Kotlin is actually used well uh, to give you the general example example of where Kotlin can fit in into this programming world we live in. Well, Kotlin can be fit perfectly in the server-side programming domain as well. It helps very much in the client-side programming. And most of all, it is majorly used in Android development, guys. And you might come to think about it. These are very wide fields that uh, which has been quoted on the screen. But guys, Kotlin is used for mobile, server-side applications, client-side application development, basically in collaboration with uh, JavaScript or JavaFX. And then you can also go about using a lot of data science techniques alongside Kotlin and this is just one of the few possibilities that we are naming it for you guys. We'll anyway check out the features in depth in the coming slides guys. So on that note you might be wondering who uses Kotlin right? Well guys again no doubt Kotlin is an amazing programming language and uh, the statistics prove the same as well. Well Kotlin is one among the famous languages used by many big technologies companies out there guys. Well tech people at Google Google, Uber, Pinterest, Evernote, Urban Clap, and Trello, and so many more go about using Kotlin for their daily requirements, guys. So this brings us to the next point of the agenda. So how did Kotlin come by? Well guys, if you actually take a look at the history of Kotlin, it is actually very interesting. Because giving you guys a fact here, Kotlin is actually considered as the alternate to Java. Well, if you guys did not know, for the last decade or so, Java was the biggest programming language, the most popular programming language to have ever existed. And then Python came along the way and took over the throne, but Java was one among the big players, right? So Kotlin had to be amazing, had to be better than Java. Java to be considered as the alternate to Java, right? So when it is on the same trend, when it is on the same legacy as Java, then Kotlin is amazing, guys. So coming to how Kotlin came by, Kotlin pretty much originated at this very famous company called as JetBrains. It was launched in the year 2011 and it has ever been open source since 2011, guys. So JetBrains is this company uh, which was basically behind the IntelliJ idea and this particular uh, tool or application was an extremely popular Java ID uh, way back from 2010 and it is actually very popular these days as well, guys. So the ID is pretty much called as IntelliJ idea and it's amazingly easy to work with. So make sure you stick till the end of the video where I'll actually walk you through on setting up IntelliJ and writing your first Kotlin code guys. So on that note, uh, the biggest point of Kotlin was actually when it made history as the people at Google announced that they would make Kotlin as an official language for Android just a couple of years ago guys. So pretty much in the world of Android, 
right? Kotlin is the biggest name as the programming language. And again, uh, it can be used alongside Java. It can be used as a replacement to Java and so much more. So what are the features of Kotlin? Guys, there are many features of Kotlin, but let me try to break it down into simpler terms so that I can help you grasp the concepts and keep them in your memory, guys. And the first thing, uh, first biggest feature, uh, which makes our developers' lives easier, which is pretty much the interoperability with Java, guys. So you can basically run your Java code on Kotlin and you can run your Kotlin code on Java and it is interoperable on multiple levels such as that as well. And it is extremely versatile because it gives you so many features. Well, it gives you so much access with respect to the code and the concepts behind that. The possibilities are endless of what you can come up with by making use of Kotlin guys. And it is a very concise language as well. It is actually almost similar to Java as I've mentioned and it is a high level programming language. So you can go about understanding what the code is doing even without having a good knowledge of the code. How cool is that? Well, if that doesn't excite you enough, let me tell you a very good point which will. Uh, the ease of use. Well guys, Kotlin is actually extremely beginner friendly language to learn with, grasp, understand and do your projects in the same. It is also very similar to Java in most most aspects that we have already discussing up now. And it is very similar to Java in many aspects as I've been telling you guys. And again, the high level syntax option, which I just told you guys, it pretty much helps learners understand clearly guys. So a high level syntax is a very good thing for a beginner or even an intermediate user because at the end of the day, if your code looks like your generic English language or the language that you speak, it just makes it easier for you to grasp all the concepts, understand and implement them guys. This brings us to our next point. Well, Kotlin is actually very efficient because when you come to look at the numbers, the length of the code in Kotlin is 20% less than the length of a Java code, which does the exact same thing. Well, think about it. If you had to pretty much write 100 lines of code, uh, in general, you had you thought of 100 lines of code. Well, Kotlin can do it in 80, while Java can do it in 100, something like that, guys. Well, a small number like this might not uh, hold you back, but think about thousands of lines of code and saving 20% on that is a big achievement, right? And again, uh, pushing the uh, easy to learn card because again, for a fresher, for a beginner and an intermediate user, getting up to speed with the technology is extremely important in terms of developer efficiency, in terms of putting out good code and working out projects, guys. And then syntax is extremely intuitive and lean. So it is very concise. It is very pithy to a point where you'll just have to type in what's exactly required and you can just get away with that, guys. You wouldn't have to type in very long syntaxes or uh, programming language uh, code snippets where uh, you have to get a small job done. And this quickly brings us to our next feature, guys, which is interoperability. When you think about it, as I've already mentioned, Java code can run on Kotlin and Kotlin code can run on Java. So this will help you on a very huge level in the intermediate to advanced programming uh, phases of your life. Because again, at the end of the day, it keeps your developer productivity extremely high. You know there is nothing redundant with the program that you're working with. And if you just know one, switching to the other is extremely simple, guys. So if you know a lot of Java, then you pretty much know most of Kotlin. How simple is that? And well, if you know most of Kotlin, again, you can pretty much move all the code to Java as well. And the biggest advantage of Kotlin is that you would never need to switch codes because let's say you want to run Java and Kotlin codes side by side and you can do just that. And this brings us to our next interesting feature of Kotlin, which is extensions, guys. Well, think about it. How easy is it to add a feature to an existing component in any programming language, right? If you guys are intermediate to advanced programmers, you can relate to this component and it is about medium to high difficulty to add a feature to an existing component. Well, think again, because with respect to Kotlin, it makes it very easy to add features to an existing component, guys. Well, let me give you an example. Think about an object oriented scenario uh, where you have to talk to two classes at the same time. So instead of just creating a class and then making sure you go to that class, uh, you know, imbibe all the methods from the class and working about it. So you basically extend a class in Kotlin and you just avoid this entirety of creating another class and then pulling all the data from that. And guys, if you think that was interesting, then think about this. You can actually work with code, which you do not have direct access to in the world of Kotlin as well. Pretty much, you know, the data can be hidden 
using data hiding methods or encapsulation and so much more. And eventually, if you need access to this data in another class or something, it is very easily accessible to you uh, with the right programming concepts and it is very easy to work with the same as well, guys. So on that note, this brings us to actually checking out what are the integrated development environments that people use to write Kotlin code in, guys. Well, as I've already mentioned, you can go about using IntelliJ IDEA from JetBrains. It is an amazing IDE and I'll just be showing you how to work with it in a couple of moments from now, guys. And then apart from IntelliJ IDEA, you have Android Studio, you have Vim and you have Sublime Text, guys. So pretty much my question to you guys at this point of time is what is your favorite IDE to go about working with Kotlin or any other programming language in general, guys? So head to the comment sections and do let me know your view on this. And again, you can pretty much go about using either of the four uh, IDEs mentioned on the screen and there are many more IDEs as well. This is just the developer favorites that I put out on your screen and a majority of us would have used pretty much one of these IDEs in the past as well, guys. Well, if you haven't, do not worry, I'll help you set up the same. So this brings us to the point where we actually go about downloading Kotlin and setting it up, guys. Well, to do this, uh, since we're using the IntelliJ IDEA IDE for this particular example, let's go ahead and download the same. So guys, I just pretty much opened up the JetBrains uh, website. It's jetbrains.com slash idea because we're gonna be downloading the IntelliJ IDEA IDE. So let me quickly hit download and pretty much there are two versions of this guys. One is an ultimate version and the other one is a community version. The ultimate version is a paid version of the software but they eventually give you a free trial to use as well. But then for all our purposes, we usually go about using the community edition because it's free, it is open source and it is meant for Java virtual machines and and Android development guys. So let me quickly hit download on that and it should be somewhere around 500 megabytes. So like I just mentioned, it is about 580 megabytes and this should take uh, somewhere around 40-45 uh, seconds to download guys. So let's quickly resume as soon as it downloads. So guys, that just took about under a minute to go about downloading the same. So let me quickly show you how we can set up the IntelliJ IDEA ID and go about working with the same guys. So you basically require uh, admin access to go about the same and let me quickly enter my uh, administrator password and we can begin with the installation guys. So this is the first screen that you will be welcomed with as soon as you uh, start the setup and it's simple guys. Uh, just hit next and then here you can select the destination folder to which you want to install. I'll just let it uh, be at uh, C drive. It's the default one, C drive program files JetBrains. I'll just hit next and here you can pretty much go about checking if your uh, system is a 32-bit machine or a 64-bit machine or uh, you can use either one it's fine but since I have a 64-bit windows installed on a 64-bit machine I'll just check the 64-bit launcher option and then you wouldn't have to check anything else guys okay? so all you have to do is hit next and hit install so again this is going to take a couple of minutes to set up and install and we can go about working with it as soon as it's done So guys, that took about two minutes to install. Just make sure you hit a run IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition and you can click on finish guys. So it's gonna set it up and start IntelliJ IDEA for us. And uh, alongside that, we can check out the next step, which is basically to run your first Kotlin program on IntelliJ IDEA guys. Well, let us quickly wait for it to open up and then we can just enter our first piece of Kotlin code into IntelliJ IDEA guys. Well guys, this is pretty much the first screen that IntelliJ will open for you. You can go about setting your theme and so much more. But for the scope of this video, let's skip all the steps and just make sure that it sets all the default settings for us and we can work with the same just for this video guys. And it's gonna take a minute to head to the next screen guys. So here we are. This is the welcome to uh, IntelliJ screen. And here it's pretty simple guys. Let's hit on create new project to begin with and it's gonna configure and create a new project file for us. So we are basically working in Kotlin. So you can pretty much select Kotlin from the left menu here and you can run it on JVM guys. So all you have to do is hit next, give it a name guys. So we can go about calling it uh, demo and we have to hit finish. So this is as simple as it gets to get your Kotlin code running guys. So it's gonna show you some tips on the screen. You can pretty much go about watching each of these tips uh, which will basically help you get faster when you're entering the code. So let me hit close for now and uh, let me maximize this, perfect. 
So if I click on the left tab, which it says project, and if I keep going into our source files, as you can see, we do not have any source file at the moment. Our project is ready, but our source files aren't because there isn't any to begin with, right? So let us quickly create a source file where we can work with Kotlin guys. So I'll just go to, uh, so I'll just right click on source or uh, create, click on new, and then pretty much click on a Kotlin file or a class guys. Uh, again, we need to give a name for this. Uh, let me call it uh, IntelliPart demo and we're going to create a file so let me hit enter and it's going to open the file for us guys so as you can already check out uh pretty much the uh the extension name for a kotlin file is dot kt guys and there's an update as well you can choose to install the update when you're going about working with the same so uh let us begin uh with a very first simple program which is pretty much the hello world right so let's change it up a little uh let me call the uh main function it's called uh so we're going to be using this particular syntax and again it's very similar to java guys so uh again we're going to go about printing it so print ln is what we're going to use instead of hello world uh let's try something else Let's try welcome IntelliPart learners. All right. And this is as simple as it gets to go about working with your first piece of code, guys. I just hit the play button. I hit run IntelliPart demo. And that's about it. As you can check out, it pretty much takes about 10 seconds or two, so to pretty much, you know, build, connect to the uh, daemon, compile your code and to give you an output. So you can go about checking the output uh, on the console window out here guys such as welcome in telepath learners and as ever you can uh, go about changing uh, this thing to pretty much anything else that you want so this will hold us uh, basically for our uh, print code right so if we have to do something else what do we go about doing let's check out how we can go about declaring a variable right so we use pretty much uh, keyword val and then we have to give the uh, variable uh, name uh, which you can pretty much say no one which is uh, number one basically and then you can uh, enter a value to be say 500 and then we're gonna have another one let's perform a basic math operation here guys so no two equal to uh what do we want 200 let's say and then uh let's say we want to do a mathematical operation between them right so we can go about using print ln and since we're doing it directly out here i think it's as simple as no one uh let's multiply it no one into no two and as soon as I hit run now, it should basically give us the uh, output of the multiple, no, basically it should give us the product of uh, 500 into 200, which is basically one lakh or 100,000 guys. So you can go about performing any mathematical operations just like this. So we can go about uh, subtracting and running the same as well. So we're gonna be given the output of uh, 300 right now, as you can check out on the screen. And it is as simple as this, guys. Well, we can walk you through an entire use case on Kotlin if you guys want that. No. Well, guys, if you want to check out an end-to-end -end project uh, written in Kotlin step-by-step uh, -step for you guys, make sure you head to the comment section and do let us know if you guys would be interested to check something out like that. And if you guys are actually interested in that, definitely we'll come up with that at the earliest, guys. So on that note, we have uh, reached the end of this video. And this brings us to the end of this session, guys. If you have any queries, head to the comment section below and let us know. We'll get back to you at the earliest. Thank you for watching.